Brahmanandam Paramasukadam Kevalam Gyanamurtim Dwanduatitam Gangana Sadrisham Tatuamasya Dilaksham Ekam Nityam Vimalam Achalam Sarvadi Sakshi Bhutam Bhavatitam Trigunarahitam Sadgurum Tam Namami Hello, welcome. Pay very close attention to these teachings. They are from a work of Adi Shankaracharya, Viveka Chudamani, and it is Advaita Vedanta. So this, these are the teachings that you find in the scriptures. They are according to the scriptures. So pay very attention to these teachings. Listen very carefully to these teachings. Then you should reflect upon them reflecting a lot upon these teachings and then meditate upon these teachings so that they may bear fruit in your heart. Continuing verse 428. He is of such established understanding who feels the blessed state always and has almost forgotten duality. He is called a Jivan Mukta, free even in this world. So the one who is of established understanding, like explained previously, is always tuned there. And as all, who feels this blessed state always and has almost forget, forgotten about duality. It's such a dim concept that he doesn't even perceive it. Almost none. He is called Ajiva Mukta, the one who is free in the body, even in this world. So he whose intellect is merged in Brahman, who though wakeful is yet free from the effects of wakefulness, and whose knowledge is free from desire. He is called Ajiva Mukta, free even in this world. So, the one who has his intellect merged with Brahman, he may be awake as like others are perceived to be awake, but he is not subject to, subject to wakefulness because he is constantly tuned with Brahman. So, the normal things of wakefulness, investments, desires, all of this, they do not touch them. And whose knowledge is free from desires. So even seeing the objects, desires don't rise because he is established in the source. The noise of the world is pacified in him. Though with part, yet with, he is without part. Whose heart is without anxiety, it receives no impression. He is called the Jivan Mukta, free even in this world. So the noise of the world is pacified in him because he doesn't resonate with that noise. Though with part, yet he is without part. Meaning, even the body is a part of that world, that body, and that body is performing whatever is to be performed by that body according to that story, to that world which is not real. He is without part because he is not... He is not identified with the body. He is constantly tuned. So it, it has a part, but yet no part. Whose heart is without anxiety. He is filled with bliss. So what is there to be anxious about? And it receives no impression. 
So the impacts of the surroundings, they don't cause an impression. He is called the Jiva Mukta, free even in this body. He who follows the body as one follows a shadow, and yet with no idea of me and mine in this body, he is called the Jiva Mukta, free even in this world. So he who follows a body as one follows a shadow. He knows it is shadow, he has no substance. But still, being there, whatever that means, he has no idea of me and mine because his sense of I has disappeared or been clarified. Maybe that's the better idea. But for the example here, disappeared. He who does not inquire about things past, does not take thought for the future, and in the present remains indifferent and unattached, that is a sign of a Jiva Mukta, free even in this body. He who doesn't care about what has passed already, and doesn't care about what is there to be passed, what's the future, and doesn't care of what appears to be happening now, he is detached from them all because there are no more desires into this world. That is a sign of a Jiva Mukta, free even in this body. In this nature that is composed of good and evil, one who sees sameness everywhere is a Jiva Mukta, free even in this body. So good and evil, they are, they are not absolute criteria. Some is considered evil to others, which this one is uh, in somehow disturbing, uh, obstructing that which others think is good and vice versa. So when two enemies fight themselves in battle, they have different purposes and this is why they become enemies. So good and bad are relative terms. but he sees sameness everywhere. Hmm. He who remains unchanged in pleasure or pain, that is a sign of a Jiva Mukta, free even in this body. Well, pleasure is not something new because he is uh, immersed in Ananda. And pain, well, how can it be felt if he is in Ananda? But even if felt, he knows that it's not real because he is reality. He whose heart is filled with the blissfulness of Brahman, regardless of internal and external things, that is a sign of a Jiva Mukta, free even in this body. Well, I think it's clear. In body and in senses, free from the idea of me and mine, who remains here as the witness only, that is a sign of a Jiva Mukta, free even in this life. So the one who is free from this idea of me and mine, even in the body and in senses, who, where this can be seen, that is a sign of a Jiva Mukta. He who has known his own self by the power of the scriptures, by the teachings of the scriptures. He who has become free from the bondage of the world. He is a Jiva Mukta, free even in his body. He who has followed the scriptures, the teachings in the scriptures that are the power for liberation and has succeeded who has become free from the bondage of the world altogether. He is a Jiva Mukta, free even in this body. He who goes, he who does not feel his identification with the body or senses or with any body of the world or with any objects of the world, he is a Jiva Mukta, free even in this body. 
So even by perceiving the bodies and the senses, he does not feel identification with it, with, with them. He is a Jiva Mukta. He who knows no difference between the world and Brahman, in his real consciousness, he is a Jiva Mukta, free even in this life. Because there is no difference. One exists, is existence, the other doesn't exist. So only Brahman is seen by the knower of truth. Being worshipped by the good or ill-treated by the wicked, who remains the same always, he is a Jiva Mukta, free in this body. So the, the good may worship the Jiva Mukta and the bad may treat him badly. Who remains the same, by remaining the same, that is the sign of a Jiva Mukta. Who doesn't, uh, who doesn't react in one way to being uh, good treated, worshipped, and the same when he is being ill treated. He still is indifferent to both. He in whom enjoyments enter like rivers into the ocean, yet cannot disturb it. He is a Jiva Mukta free even in this world. So enjoyments go to him, may go to him, eh, like rivers into the ocean. Everything goes to the ocean. Yet cannot disturb it. Those enjoyments do not disturb it. He is a Jiva Mukta, free even in this world. He who has known the reality of Brahman cannot be like one of the world. He cannot do things as before. If he does, he has not known the reality. He is deluded. So everything changed after realization. Maybe not the actual what is observed by others, but from him is completely different from his point of view. So, he cannot do things as before because he is not deluded and he is doing nothing actually. He cannot engage again in his whole habits because old habits were about satisfying the character and all of this. Because he sees the oneness for all time, there's nothing new to acquire. His desires cannot be felt. They have no substance. Even if they appear, they couldn't subside. Even a very lustful man feels no desire when he is in the presence of his mother. In the same manner, a man is free from worldliness if he has realized Brahman, the infinite self. The scriptures say, even the, me the meditative are conscious of the externals. Okay, okay, this is nature of prarabdha. Now, the scriptures say, even the meditative are conscious of the externals because of prarabdha, the result of past actions. Interesting, this, this part will be interesting. So the story, the body, sensitivities of the body will understand this. That even the meditative are conscious of externals because of prarabdha, the result of past actions. And as long as one feels pleasure and pain, and pain so long prarabdha remains. And prarabdha remains. The karma that this prarabdha is the karma that has given, it is the cause of this body, and the body is not separated from the universe and from the story, from the, the, the journey that the body undergo, undergoes, the apparent journey. And so long as this prarabdha remains, pleasure and pain will still be 
uh, experienced until it ends. So as long as one feels pleasure and pain, so long prarabdha remains. And prarabdha is for the body and the mind, not for the self. But I'm he, I'm he. This knowledge does away with all past actions done in a million and millions of births. Whatever one does, good or bad, in the state of a dream, which is the result of ignorance, does that affect him when awakened? Supposedly not. One who has seen his own self, which is always free from all contact, indifferent to everything, though in him is he never attached by he is never attached by action, whether past, present, or future, as the sky is never attached to anything. So actions done by the awakened one, they do not bind him. It is, it is according to Prarabdha Karma, the karma that brought forth that body and its story. So this is not his karma. And the actions, the, the, the fruits of these actions do not bind them also. And by doing them, he is never attached. It's like watching a movie on, on the TV. You're watching the story. You may even, for the sake of entertainment, uh, experience pleasure and pain and all of that. But you know it's a movie. And you can come out of it for will. And whatever happened, whatever you live through that movie, it will not bind you. In a pitcher of wine, the sky is not affected by the smell of that wine. So the Atman is not affected by name and form or by their actions. So once again, he is not that body, he is Atman. So whatever that body is doing, that doesn't bind him the least. The pupil speaks. Good, I understand. After knowledge, all actions vanish. But things done before the attainment of knowledge, what of them? Knowledge cannot destroy them giving, without giving their effect, like the arrow which has been shot already. So he's talking about the actions that were done prior to awakening. And gives the example of the, the arrow that has been shot. You cannot stop it in the middle. It will strike its targets. So what about the, the effects of those, of those actions? There was a cow and you thought it was a tiger and you shot. And now you know it is a cow and not a tiger. Yet the arrow stops not but strikes the cow. The master speaks. Yes, you are right. Prarabdha is surely very powerful. Even the knower, even to the knower, it will bring effects. Because the fire of knowledge destroys that which has been stored up and what one has yet to do. But what is done, it cannot destroy. But those who stay in the consciousness of oneness with Brahman are never affected by these three. They are Brahman without qualities. So again, the nature of prarabdha. So the karma which is giving fruits, which has bring forth this body, the story of the body is included. So the experiences that the body has to undergo, all of these things. And the short-term karmas and not long-term because those will be born, those will be burnt and will end with this body. But those short-term short karmas and the karmas that have been, uh, which are in accordance, which are a part of the prarabdha karma, that gives give birth to this body and then will end it also. So these, they will have to be lived, experienced, good and bad. But the knower of Brahman is not affected by these, even if he appears to be externally 
for <laughs> many reasons, but he is not affected by those. Therefore, it is not proper to speak of Prarabdha, which belongs to the Upadis, for him who remains in Brahman alone, as it is not proper to impute the things of a dream to a man who is awake. So, this is a very good example, to impute things of a dream to a man who is awake. So, the man in his dream made something that wasn't correct, and when he wakes up, there's no point in saying, oh, you did this in your dream, so you have to pay the price. It was a dream. It's not real. So, in the same. So, speaking about prarabdha, prarabdha karma is of the body and the mind. Not of identity. Identity, when released, when free, has nothing to do with this body or mind. So, whatever is undergoing... It has nothing to do with the Atman. So, Parabdha is for the body and the mind. One who is awake does not identify himself with the body, or the senses or actions of dreams, but stays in his own wakeful state. So also, one awake in Brahman identifies himself with Brahman, and this body becomes just as the body seen in the dream. So, in the same, whatever the body is doing, or whatever the, the body has to undergo, the body-mind, they are like the bodies in the dream. He, he doesn't identify. You don't identify with the body of the dream when you wake up. So does the knower of Brahman, doesn't identify with the body, the mind, or the story that the body-mind is experiencing. When he who is awake does not identify himself with the... Okay, I read this one. Therefore, he does not try to support what is unreal, nor to acquire the things of the world. But if one acquires and follows the unreal, then we say he has not freed himself from sleep yet. So, therefore, he does not try to support what is unreal. He knows the nature of the body-mind, so he doesn't try to support it. Nor to acquire the things of the world, but if one acquires and follows the unreal, meaning if one is giving importance to the unreal, then we say he has not freed himself from sleep yet. So he who stays in the Supreme always sees nothing else. Yet you say he remains in the world. Yet you say, not him. Yes, as is the memory of things seen in the dream, so are his actions in this world. So, this is a good example. It is comparing the actions of the awakened one to the memory of the things which was done in a dream. How thin they are, because the dream is seen as unreal, and then it's the memory of that unreal. But here, the awakened one stays in the real always. Yet, you say he remains in the world because this is your vision. Those eyes are seeing that body which you say it's him. And you say he is in this world. But it isn't. This is what you're saying. This is what the dream is saying. This body is made by actions. Imagine prarabdha for the body. It belongs to it. But this Atman is beginningless. It is not proper to imagine Prarabdha for the Atman. The Atman is not made by actions. So Atman is the real identity. The identity, the light which is behind the body, which gives it life. So Prarabdha is for the body. It belongs to it. It is the tool to the experience of that karma. 
And it was those seeds of karma that brought that body to existence and that body lives for them alone. But the Atman, the identity, which has no more confusion with the body, is free from that altogether, from the body, from its prarabdha. It is unborn, eternal, and universal, thus says the scripture, which never speaks falsehood. That is the nature of the Atman. Unborn, eternal, and universal. When one lives in the body, you can imagine prarabdha for him. But to live in the body is not desirable. Therefore, give up prarabdha. Give up the notion of I am the body or the mind. Again, to think of prarabdha even for the body is ignorance. It is error because where is the reality of the thing imputed? When it is unreal in its very nature, how is it born and how can what is not born die? So it's like thinking of prarabdha for the snake which is seen on the rope. So prarabdha is the reason why bodies come into existence. So, if the snake never existed, so what prarabdha are we talking about? What experiences are we talking about? So, in that sense, also, it is incorrect. If you can once destroy ignorance with all its actions, by knowledge, then where is death, where is birth, and where is the reality of that which is only darkness? If you can once realize the true nature of the rope, where is the snake and where is the fear? The pupil says, this moment you told me about prarabdha. What self-contradiction? No, the Shruti speaks about prarabdha only for the sake of the dull-minded who cannot understand the Atman and are afraid of their body and not for the learned. So he's saying that the master is contradicting itself because prarabdha is only a concept to the dull-minded, the one who fears the actions of their body and, and everything that sprouts from it. But the one who is learned doesn't fear that. And we are now continue in the next one. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti Shanti Shanti